Hey, what's up? Welcome to this Spotfire tutorial brought to you by Datafuel. My name is Kyle Lamata, and today I'll be showing you how to perform calculations between multiple columns in a cross table, such as subtracting one column from another. In this example, we're interested in comparing the performance of two different well completion types for different fields. The first column shows the average IP for completion type 1, and the second column shows the average IP for completion type 2. An IP in this case just stands for initial production, which is a measurement of the performance of a well shortly after it starts producing. And the third column, and this is the challenging one to create, subtracts the average IP of type 2 from type 1. In this tutorial, I'll show you one way that we can accomplish this, and in future videos, I'll show two more options. And I'd like to give a shout out to one of our blog readers for coming up with this idea. Thanks for asking the question, and if anyone else out there has any specific questions regarding Spotfire, please let me know and I'll try to work it into a video. Let's assume that there are two ways to drill and complete an oil well. We'll simplify this by calling them Type 1 and Type 2. If you look after these wells, it would be important to know which completion type resulted in the most production. One way to do this is to determine, on average, how much did a well produce during its first three months, also called the three-month IP. It would also be helpful to see how much different one well completion type performed compared to another, especially across different geographic areas such as the field. We can set this up in a cross table with the field name for the row values, completion type for the column values, and average three month IP for the cell values. The next question would be, how much better was one completion type? We could do this by taking the difference between these two columns, but the problem is that we can't do this mathematical operation in this cross table because any cell value that we add to the bottom axis will be broken down by the two completion types because we selected that column for the top axis. To make this work in a cross table, we would need to have one column with the average three month IP for each completion type and then take the difference between those two columns. I've come up with three different ways to do this. In this video, we'll explain the first way. The first method is to pivot the source data to create two new columns. One column with a three month IP for the completion type one and another column for completion type two. To do this, we'll make a copy of the current data table and then apply a pivot transformation to the copy table. Click File, Add Data Table, and then scroll down to the From Current Analysis section. Select the table that you want to pivot, and now we can apply this transformation before inserting the table. If you don't see this section, just click on this arrow to expand the window. Select Pivot from the dropdown, and then click Add. In this example, we want to compare the three month IP rate across our four different field names. So I'll select this column for the row identifier. I want to see one new column for each of our completion type. So I'll choose completion type for the column titles. The values that we're comparing is the three month IP rate. So select that column and then choose an aggregation method. My data has average daily production. So I'll select average for the aggregation type just to be consistent. The naming pattern will define how the column titles are displayed in the pivoted table. We can take a look at the preview down here to see what the titles are going to look like. And I want to remove these parentheses from the column names, so I'll just backspace those out from the column naming pattern. Now select the transfer columns, which will be included with a pivot table, but not broken down by column titles, which in this case is completion type. Instead of adding our columns one by one, you can click the drop down and then select multiple columns at one time, and then also change the aggregation method for these columns at the same time. And the last section down here is for another naming pattern for the transfer columns. I'm not interested in the aggregation method for these columns, so I'll just use percent %t to pass the column names into our new pivoted table. Now we can click OK, and before adding this table, I like to preview it to make sure that everything looks right. We can take a look and see that there are two new columns, one for each completion type. And we can also see our transfer columns for the county, lease name, operator names, and so on. Notice how this table only has four rows, one for each field. This is why I decided to first make a copy of the table before pivoting it. That way we don't lose the well level details. 
we still have the original table that we can use in other visualizations. Close the preview, and then if you'd like, you can rename the new table, which I'll do, and then click OK to finish adding this new pivoted table. And after you click OK, Spotfire is going to automatically insert a new page and load your default visualization type, which for me is a table. If you don't see the data, you can insert a table visualization and then switch the source data from the legend. I'm not going to use this page, so I'll go ahead and remove it and then insert a new cross table in the example one tab. This time we'll select a different data source for the cross table, which is going to be the pivoted table that we just added. I'll keep field name for the row values. And now that we've pivoted the data and have one column for each completion type, we can select these two columns for the table values. This data is already aggregated at the field level, so the aggregation method doesn't really matter, but I'll choose average. And for the top axis, we just want to keep the column names, which is going to refer back to the column names down here, so we can just remove any other columns that are showing up. And finally, I'll give these columns a custom display name to make them easier to interpret. Average 3-month IP for type 1. And average 3-month IP for type 2. Because we've pivoted the data, now we can take the difference between these two values in a third column on the value axis using a custom expression. Take the average of completion type 1, and then subtract the average of completion type 2. Make sure to have an aggregation method, otherwise you'll get an error. When you're writing custom expressions, use the left square bracket to bring up a list of the available columns, and then you can pick the column to add to the expression. I'll give this column a name of type 1 minus type 2. And of course, you can do any other types of mathematical operations. You're not limited to just subtraction. Now we can quickly see which completion type performed best for each field, and also by how much. This achieves the desired result of performing a mathematical operation of two columns in a cross table, besides just using that built-in total. We can also look at the results of these two cross tables and verify that they have the same average values for type 1 and type 2, indicating that the pivot transformation was done correctly. And the nice thing about this pivoted table is that it will automatically update when your source data changes, so you don't have to worry about reconfiguring the pivoted table or the cross table when new data comes in. It's going to automatically update for you. The final thing I'll do is make this table look a little bit nicer by removing the legend, the axis selectors, and the title bar. Okay, so that's it for the first solution. The second example gets you the same result, but without adding the second table or applying any transformations. To quickly recap, in this video I showed one way to perform calculations within a cross table by transforming the data with a pivot. Make sure to check out the video for the second part of this topic to see the next example which involves calculated columns. In the third example, you'll be able to choose which columns to display and compare on the fly using property controls. So be sure to check back in a couple weeks to see that video if it's not already live. The best way to do that is by subscribing to my YouTube channel so you're alerted when new videos are published. And don't forget to visit the blog post linked in the notes below to download this Spotfire template shown in the video. Thanks for watching and have a great day.